Ladies and gentlemen, in today's video, I'm gonna be walking you through one of the most important things inside Google Ads, and that is keyword research. This is one of the most overlooked things I find in almost every single Google Ads account I look over or manage, and that is because people just don't want to take the time to do this, and yes, it is a little time consuming, but this gives you a huge leg up as opposed to your competition, who, for the most part, are just not gonna take the time to do this. And in today's video, I'm going to explain why and how to do this this step by step for you so you know exactly how to actually come up with these good keywords that are actually going to be your most your best bet at actually doubling down and making sure you're getting the best results possible at least at first when you first start off your Google Ads campaign it can't be perfect because we don't know absolutely everything but this is your best bet going forward and it's a lot better than almost every other uh, scenario I see on the internet at least all the campaigns I look over uh, a lot of them have done really poor things and it's cost them a lot of money so let's get into it what is keyword research and how does it work and essentially I'm gonna define what a keyword is and a keyword defined by Google is words or phrases that that are used to match your ads with the terms people are searching for. So essentially when someone types into Google some type of phrase, so maybe it's pool installation service near me, your ad can then appear below it, which is really, really good if you are you know, selling pool services. Uh, it's not good if you are selling HVAC services. So this is the importance of keyword research. We don't want our ads to appear for something that we aren't actually trying to offer. Now, I know that's a giant jump and giant leap there, but you'd be surprised at how little difference there actually needs to be in between keywords to actually bid on keywords that are completely irrelevant to your campaign and your service. So please stick with me here. This is actually extremely important and will save you a lot of money when starting off your Google Ads campaign. Paint. A few more benefits I should mention about keywords and doing this properly and making sure everything is structured correctly. And I'm going to do an entire video on how to structure your account relatively soon. Uh, so stay tuned for that. I'll link it up above if it's, uh, you know, there. Essentially, when we research our keywords properly, they're going to be a lot more relevant to our ads and to the actual ad group and our landing page. And the reason we want this is because of a thing called quality score and ad relevance, landing page experience. And what was the third one? Expected click through rate. I almost forgot that one. One. Uh, essentially, once we have all of these very high, Google is going to see those three metrics, the last three I mentioned, and give us a higher quality score. Well, what happens when we get a higher quality score is that our cost per click goes down because Google goes, hey, this is really relevant to our customer. And we being Google want to show them the most relevant ads and websites possible. That way they have the best customer experience on our platform. And we're going to have, you know, more return visits and we're going to make more money from them long term because we are more relevant. And that's essentially what we want to do with our ads and our keywords. We want to find keywords that are relevant to our service and then pair them with good ads and a good landing page. And it's pretty simple. I created an entire video to show you essentially how the entire Google ad system works in 2023. And it's worked this way for a pretty long time, to be honest. Uh, but that video is cool. If you want to check it out, go ahead. I'll link it up above. Uh, but that is really what we're aiming for. We're aiming for high ad relevancy. And this is done in one of two ways, making sure your ad is good or making sure your keywords are good. And hopefully we can pair them both well. Now, before we actually get into finding the exact keywords we want to target, we must first have a goal in mind. If we have no goal whatsoever, we're going to be just shooting off into the distance, hoping, you know, maybe a keyword sticks or maybe it doesn't. We need to understand what services are we going after and which ones do we actually want our ads to appear under. And this is actually a pretty deep conversation you need to have either with yourself or with the actual business owner. And this is because a lot of services aren't created equally. And if you look at certain services, a lot of them are not that profitable for a lot of business owners. So you need to double down on your most profitable services in most cases. And by looking at your own business or client's business and going, hey, these are the services that are worth the most amount of money to us. We don't have to spend all that much time actually fulfilling the order or whatever it is. We can make a lot more money because Google Ads is expensive and generally it doesn't matter all that much what services you're going after. You're spending, you're going to spend good money anyway, so you might as well get the best services and the most amount of profit out of it. So that's what I highly recommend going after the most profitable services for your business right off the bat and then going, okay, now we can go and find keywords around this specific service. You don't want to target 25 services up front because you're going to just overextend yourself in most cases and you're not going to be able to optimize this and you're going to get really bad results. I normally recommend picking one or two services right at the beginning and then just doubling down on those, making sure those are working and then expand afterwards. So that's something super important. Please have a goal in mind of what you're actually going to go after. Go after the most profitable services 
and then you can continue on from there. So once we have our goals down and we know what services we're gonna go after, we know the actual profit margins here, we need to generate keyword ideas. And how do we generate keyword ideas? Where, where do these keywords come from? And a lot of them you can just come up with internally. Like they're not super complicated in most uh, cases. Sometimes they are pretty complicated. Uh, and I'll show you actually how to find more and more keywords relatively easily here. Uh, but I get asked all the time, what keyword research tool do you use? There's a lot of them out there, some free, some paid. And I always recommend the Google Ads Keyword Planner. It's completely free, it's in your Google Ads account. It is first-hand data from Google, so it's the most accurate data you're gonna get in most cases. And all the other you know, third-party websites that generate keyword ideas, they can give you better insights into your competitors and stuff like that. But in most cases and scenarios, websites like SEMrush, Moz, SpyFu is another one, these are generally secondary data sources and they're just kind of guessing on all of this. So I generally tend to stay away from that. You can use them to, you know, help a little bit, but I don't think it's worth spending, you know, hundreds of dollars in most cases and scenarios to find one or two more keywords that you were going to find anyway in the Google Ads Keyword Planner. It could give you some interesting insights into your competitors, but for most cases, uh, I highly recommend just sticking with the Google Ads Keyword Planner. I think for most service-based businesses, uh, that's your best bet. If you're you know, doing giant campaigns and stuff like that, where you're spending fifty to $100,000 a month in this stuff, then yeah, absolutely try and get every single resource. But if you're a small business trying to get a few more leads, uh, that's probably your best bet, Google Ads Keyword Planner. That's what we use. I, it works perfectly perfectly and I love it. So once we have our goal done, we have our Google Ads Keyword Planner in mind. What do we do? How do we actually use a Google Ads Keyword Planner? And all we have to do is come over here to our Google Ads account. All we have to do is click on the Tools and Settings button in our Google Ads account right up here. We're gonna click on that. We're gonna come over here to our Keyword Planner. We're gonna hit Discover New Keywords. And then we're going to actually geomodify this before we actually type in any keywords. The reason for this is we want accurate data. If you don't type in the correct location here and geomodify this, you're going to get results that aren't for your area. And this is going to lead to inaccurate data. So very important to do. Uh, what we're going to do is actually just hit the little X button here because we don't want to target all of Canada. Uh, most companies will target several cities or maybe an entire state or province. Uh, it's really up to your own uh, scenario and your situation. So we're gonna target, let's do Mississauga, or yeah, not Mississippi, a little, little different. Um, and we could do Oakville. And once you've targeted all the cities here, I'm only gonna do a few just for the example here. You can just come right down here to save. And then we're going to type in some type of high buying intent keyword. And what I mean by high buying intent is a keyword with some type of modifier on it. So if we were installing pools, you could do a keyword like pool installation services. That shows high buying intent as opposed to a keyword like pools, which is very vague. And the actual person typing this in could mean a lot of different things. Maybe they're looking for pictures of pools or public pools. They may not be looking exactly for pool installation. Same with HVAC. If someone just types in heating and cooling, maybe they're not actually looking for that. Maybe they're looking for something else. But if someone types in heating and cooling services near me, that's a pretty good idea that this person is actually interested in buying from us. So for this example, let's do HVAC services. Um, that's a pretty good idea that someone is, hey, they're looking for HVAC services. Uh, I like HVAC, so you know, let's do that. I, you're normally good with just one keyword. You could add a few more if you'd like. You're gonna see a whole bunch that pop up here in a second, so stay tuned for that. You can also start off with a website here if you prefer. I don't really like doing that. I find it's a pain to filter through all the stuff. Uh, I just prefer doing it this way. I find it a lot easier but it's completely up to you. Uh, for this one, we're just gonna type in HVAC services and then hit get results. And we should have a whole bunch of keywords pop up here in just a second. And as you can see, we have a thousand and one keyword ideas available to us. Now, what I would like to do right off the bat is just go over all the different things in here so you kind of get a good understanding of what you're looking at. Because if this is your first time ever using the Keyword Planner, this may be a little confusing. The first thing we're gonna look at is the actual keyword section here. Sometimes this is actually slid over all the way here. All you have to do is click on this, slide it across, and now you can see all the keywords. I've seen that a few times and people are like, why can't I see my keywords? It's like, you just gotta slide it over. Not a real big deal there. 
Um, and as you can see, there's a lot of keywords in here, and uh, we should have more than enough for a basic campaign. The next column here is average monthly searches, and this is essentially how many times a month people actually type in these specific keywords. And as you can see, 100 to 1,000 times, 1,000 to 10,000 times, and these are good estimates from Google, uh, and it is primary data, so this is actually coming from Google, this is actual real results that Google has indexed, so you can trust it to be somewhat accurate. And normally, if you were to see a average monthly search result of, you know, zero to 10, zero to 10, zero to 10, or even 10 to 100, maybe that's not enough search results for your campaign, and you might have to expand the area. Once you start seeing 100 to 1,000 or 10 or 1,000 to 10,000, you can get a general idea that you can run a campaign on this. You should have enough impressions. It shouldn't be very difficult to start seeing results in your campaign. If you have too few search results, then you're going to be in trouble and your campaign is going to take a very long time to actually optimize, which is not somewhere we want to be. So make sure you have enough search results here. Uh, the area you're targeting is big enough and you have enough keywords. The next one is the three month change. So essentially, how much has this changed over the past three months? Months. Has this gone up or down with regards to the monthly searches? And as you can see, HREC Repair Near Me has gone up 900%. It's July here in Canada, so you guys could probably figure out why. It's quite hot here, so most people are probably looking for some type of AC. The year-over-year -year change is the exact same thing. It's just compared to last year instead of the last three months. The next column is competition, and I would take this with a grain of salt. This is essentially how many people on Google Ads are actually bidding for these keywords. It's not perfect because some competitors on Google Ads, just because there might be a lot of people actually bidding on these particular keywords the competitors themselves aren't doing a very good job of it so just because there's high competition doesn't mean you can't go after that keyword a lot of the time keywords with high competition uh, still go for reasonably priced bid ranges as you can see here nine to twenty eight dollars that's kind of actually low for this and it's likely due to people just not actually structuring their account pro properly using landing pages being relevant all that stuff uh, the next column here is the actual impression share. If we were actually running these keywords in our campaign, we would have an impression share, which means how many times does our keyword pop out out of 100%? So if we had a big pie, it was 100%. Uh, would we have 10% of the pie? Would we have 20% of the pie? Uh, and that's just a good idea of to see where we are at for the potential amount of impression share we could get. How much more could we actually get out of this? Uh, but since we're not bidding on any keywords here, uh, it's at zero, so that's why. Uh, the next and final columns are the top of page bid range, low and high. This is essentially what you can expect to pay uh, per click, somewhere in the middle usually. Uh, once you start optimizing the campaign, you can start getting a little lower here, probably closer to 10 to $15 a click. Uh, but these cities are very expensive. Toronto, Burlington, Oakville, houses there go for several million dollars. So you can uh, expect to pay pretty good money for a HVAC system. And that's why the actual cost per clicks are so high here. If you go in here and you go, oh my God, I've geo-modified this. I've gone after these particular keywords. You can always add more keywords to try to see if there's actual keywords that may be possible that you could bid on profitably. profitably. Uh, but most of the time, this is a pretty good indicator of what you're going to be paying per click uh, and give you a good idea of what you're going to be spending in your account overall. So once we've done all of this, now we have to find high buying intent keywords. And like I said before, we want to go after keywords with modifiers on them, some type of modifier like contractor near me, companies near me, services near me, or local HVAC services, stuff like this that shows that people on the other side of the screen are actually interested in buying our services because we want leads and we want highly qualified leads and we want to make more sales. So for this one, all we have to do is actually go through here and you're gonna use a little bit of your own intuition here. So I'm gonna click on HVAC services. What I'm gonna do is show you how to structure an ad group uh, in the next video that I release. And this is gonna be slightly different. We're gonna have an AC ad group, we're gonna have a heating ad group, and we're gonna have an HVAC ad group. And I'm gonna show you the difference. You're gonna be able to be a lot more relevant if you go after similar keywords. So for this one, we're just gonna go after HVAC keywords uh, instead of going after HVAC AC heating. As you can see, they're very different keywords. They, for the most part, go after the same services, but they're all worded differently. And if we could create ads that say, you know, looking for AC services as opposed to looking for HVAC services, we can become more relevant than our competition, get a lower cost per click, get a higher quality score and get more leads overall. And I'll show you how to do all that in the next video. Uh, I wanna keep this video somewhat simple for you guys and easy to follow along. So for this video, for sake of example, we're just gonna go after HVAC uh, and keep it nice and simple. HVAC services, that's a great high buying intent uh, modifier. HVAC near me, that's good. Heating and cooling near me, that's fine. Uh, 
keep going. Heating and cooling, I might skip on this. Uh, we come back to it later maybe if we need more search volume. HVAC companies near me, that's perfect. Heating and air near me, that's good. HVAC repair, service, good, good. HVAC repair, heating and air conditioning, I'm gonna skip on. What else is here? HVAC companies, that's good. Uh, heating, good. And you guys are gonna start, start spotting a trend and you're gonna be able to do this a lot quicker once you do it a couple times. Uh, you can see HVAC contractors near me, HVAC heating and cooling companies near me, uh, HVAC contractor, and now you go, okay, these are keywords that you know people are gonna go after. They're gonna actually have some sort of buying intent on. And again, you're gonna get a lot better at this as time goes on. HVAC maintenance, heating company near me. Uh, we'll skip on that for right now. And another great thing you can do here, and one thing I forgot to mention is there's an excellent option here to refine keywords. And you may be a little intimidated because there was like a thousand and one keywords here. Uh, but what you can do is actually click on this and a lot of the keywords that we're going to be looking through aren't relevant to us. So what we can do is actually get rid of all the contractors here. If we click on brand, we don't want to be going after other competitors most of the time. Uh, and some people think it's a good idea. Uh, I disagree with that. In most cases, I'm sure there are some cases where you could do it. Uh, but normally when you actually target keywords that are the competitors keywords, you, the person on the other end of the screen is going to click on your ad, call you, figure out it's not the actual contractor that they actually wanted to call, and then hang up. And now you've wasted time and money, and it's not a place we normally want to be. So we're gonna uncheck our contractors here. We're gonna scroll down. Another thing normally we're not gonna be bidding on is brand names, so Mini, Carrier, Linux. Uh, if you sell these, you could possibly bid on these keywords, but for the most part, if we're selling services, we don't want to bid on actual brands. So we can uncheck that as well. And this is just gonna save us a whole bunch of time. We're not gonna to have to look through any of this. Services, we're going to keep all of these and then other, uh, yeah, that's fine, we'll keep all of those as well. And as you can see, it's unselected some of my keywords, so I probably should have done that beforehand, uh, but it is what it is. We are only 13 keywords in, um, that's completely fine. And we'll just scroll through here, HVAC, HVAC, HVAC repair, da -da 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 -da. HVAC companies, that's fine, HVAC contractor. And I would normally find 15 to 20 keywords to bid on. Um, HVAC maintenance, best HVAC companies near me, that's good. HVAC heating and air near me, that's fine. Uh, what else could we bid on? We could bid on heating and cooling repair near me, that's good. HVAC installation, that's a very good one. HVAC heating and or HVAC maintenance near me. HVAC tech near me, that's fine. Heating and air repair near me. And we're gonna stop at that. You can continue on if you'd like, go through all the keywords. And um, essentially, once you find all the keywords you want to actually bid on, you can come over here to plan. And what we're gonna do is keep this on plan, don't actually change this. Uh, if you notice that it's on existing campaign, we don't want that right now. Uh, we want to actually edit this in another file. We don't wanna send all these keywords to our actual active account. That's not something we wanna do right now. So make sure this is in plan. We're gonna come over here to new ad group. We're gonna type in HVAC, uh, we'll just put near me, actually HVAC service, service. Cool. And then we're gonna hit add keywords. And as you can see, all the keywords that we just clicked on, we can scroll across and it says in plan, that's cool. So it's actually in the actual plan right now that we're going to be editing in a second. And then we can come over here to forecast. And this is a cool little tool Google gives you to kind of anticipate what you can expect out of a campaign. Is it completely accurate? By all means, no, it's not completely accurate, uh, but it's a nice little guesstimation from Google of what you can expect to uh, achieve inside Google Ads. What we're gonna do now is come over here to the little download file. We're gonna hit CSV or Google Sheets. I prefer working in Google Sheets, but you can absolutely download this as, as a CSV if you feel like it. We're gonna come over here to Google Sheets, click on it. We're gonna hit download. And then what this is gonna do is generate a nice Excel file, which we're going to be able to easily edit and structure our account with. And this just makes life so much easier as opposed to having to manually move all these keywords over inside Google Ads. I'm not a big fan of that. Uh, but as you can see, all of our keywords here, we'll just we'll just move this over a little bit and you can see all of them. Uh, that's nice, they're all here. And in the next video, I'm gonna show you how to structure all of this, make sure your account is very relevant so you have a very high ad relevancy so you can have a higher quality score and you can bring your cost per click down.
Now, one important thing I did want to mention is if you haven't checked out our Google Ads optimization checklist, it's absolutely awesome. It walks you through what to optimize on a weekly, monthly, and three month basis inside your account. Pilots use checklists. I'm not as complicated and smart as a pilot, but it's nice to have a little reminder of did I actually check this off last week and did I not check this off last week? And I use the Google Ads optimization checklist for that for all of our campaigns. It just makes life so much easier. So if you haven't checked that out, the link is down below. It's completely free. So definitely check it out if you have any comments questions or concerns leave a comment down below I will do my best to get back to it the past month has been absolutely uh, insane with the amount of comments and positive you know stuff that I've been getting uh, I absolutely love you guys you're all wonderful uh, other than that though you guys have a wonderful day and take care I wish you all well